It's December 1st, 4 o'clock. Um, today is the day oh right my god. Oh my god, Brandon. Can you? Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I am interrupting you. Go ahead. No, Go you're ahead. good. Um, I was just sort of introducing the first artist Q&A of this academic year. Um, so yesterday, Brandon's show, Heart for a Brain, um, was published to the ASP website and um, it's available for everyone to view uh, with internet access, which is super exciting. So today I'm just going to be asking Brandon a few questions about art and the like. And um, Janet, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the chat and we can get to them. So um, Brandon, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Brandon Santana, and I'm the artist for um, December. Or I don't know if it's a if it's just is it just like a month? Um, hopefully, it will just be up on the ASP website for ever. But as soon oh. as one takes over my position, they can choose to take it down. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the timeline as of right now is a year. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know what to say in that part. I'm like, I, I didn't know if it was just a month or not. So. Um, well, you are the first artist to show with the Virtual View Gallery this academic year, and the next show isn't going to be published until late January. So, yeah, you can oh. see the month of December. Oh, okay. Um, okay, cool. So let's just dive into it. Um, so most of the works that are involved, or I guess um, included in Heart for a Brain are, um, all of them are digital film and photography. So I wanted to ask what interested you about editorial photography and that style? Um, at first, um, in like 2015 and 2016, I was really into, um, looking at magazines, like fashion magazines and whatnot. And my dad always told me that I could be a model or something like that. So I tried getting into it and it didn't work. So I started making my own uh, editorials, I guess, because nobody would, no agency would like take me. So I started doing it on my own. So let's see. So for each of your sort of like editorial photographs, you were the model, the subject, yeah. and the photographer. Yeah. And the editor, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would do everything for that. Like I would just um, take a lot of photos on cell timer and then I would um, just pose <laughs> until, you know, a right, the right photo was came out, I guess. Yeah. So could you talk about the um, the text additions to the photographs that are included in the show? The text editions? Yeah, so it looks like, I noticed in a lot of the photos, they sort of look like magazine covers. Oh, yeah. So what were some of the, I guess, what was your direction in adding those texts to the photos? I have no idea. I think it was just like random stuff that I would think about back in the day. Like I look at them now and they're kind of cringy, but um, I don't know. It's just what I was feeling at that time. So you would say that they're reflections of your feelings at yeah. the time that they were created? Yeah, and just trying to add some something else to it because I always wanted to add like an extra text just for like to make it more to fill in the spaces, I guess. So I just came up with random stuff to put on there. Nice. So I have a personal question. What does the FE stand for? Oh, that's Spanish for faith. Just, oh, like fe? Like fe. Okay. Yeah. So would that be the title of your... Um, the fake magazine would be yeah. like then <laughs> yeah okay so what was the inspiration for that um i don't really remember it was just um um uh, i have no idea honestly 
I think I don't remember really. I thought I, I mean, I remember that there was like an initial like idea for it, but I forgot. Yeah, so some of these pieces are from 2016, which is almost, geez, five years ago. Yeah. Um, so more recently, you've been working on creating some short films. Do you want to talk about your motivation behind the direction of the short films that are included in the show? Um, they're just, um, most of them been, uh, they were just like thoughts that I, that I basically had like throughout the day and then I would turn them into like movies. Like I, like when I have conversations with people, I'm like, you know, I say something and then I'm like, oh, that could be a short movie or something like that. And, or if I'm in a car, just like looking out the window, sometimes I think of something and then like five minutes later, I'm like, oh, I thought I had like five minutes ago, it could be a sh short movie. So I think that's how a lot of them are made. I, th I mean, thought of. So they're just these like spurts of creative genius, I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just uh, <laughs> a lot of people could say that, but I, don't, I have no idea, honestly. How do you feel about um, at least the films that are included in the show, how do you feel about those now after they've been made? Uh, I don't, uh, for like the first few, like the first or second day, I'm like, I'm glad that I like got them out. And then I'm like, oh, now I feel the void of, uh, I feel a void again. I'm like, I gotta fill the void and make another one now. Because uh, I like uh, doing a few uh, every other month. I mean, like every other month, so I don't like, so the ideas keep coming out and they don't like uh, stack up, I guess. So in filmmaking, is there a role that you enjoy the most? Uh, what do you mean by role? So for example, you direct and in some cases act in your own short films. Um, oh. Is there something that you like best? Is it the filming, the direction? Um, I like doing the the filming and uh, I like being part of the editing process and also like I like being part of every everything except probably the acting, like me acting in it because I don't care about, about being in front of the camera anymore. And so, yeah, like I always use like Desi in a lot of movies. So, <laughs> cause that's like my scapegoat kind of, just like to use him as, as a, the actor. So, Desi, because you're here, I guess you can um, input something if you'd like. Um, but, Brandon, you're directing the short films and then you recruit some friends to act in them for you. Are you pretty strict with your direction or is there some improv happening too? Um, there's been times where I was pretty strict. Cause I'm a, sometimes I can be a control freak, but um, there's been a few, I feel like there's been a few improvs. I'm not sure if I remember any, but I'm pretty sure the, the one of him yelling probably has some improv. Um, and, but the, the, the one that's the, the one about the laughing to death, I think that one was just like a hundred percent, just like following a direction by like following what we planned. How many takes did that one take to get what you wanted? For the, which, for like the laughing part? Mm -hmm. um, I think it was about like four or three of them. It was like an, on election night and it was like after we thought Trump had won because like it seemed like he was like leading and then like, uh, I think we were also like occupied with like listening to the the election results and all that. And then we um, just, I think it took about like four tries and then we took the, I took the best out of the, of the four takes, I guess. So that was like a nice, coincidentally, a nice break from the election news. Yeah. Session. And also there's two takes in that, that it, it seems like it's just one take, but there's a part where it cuts to like another take, just like 
because it matches it matched really well. So, so there's two takes of that one take. Like there's it's, it's supposed to be like one sequence of him laughing, but there's actually two. But Strobe's made it easy for it to like edit to the next like take. Could you explain in um, the screaming video, the Four Stooges, could you explain the role of the subject? Um, like, what's, what's it about? Yeah. <laughs> um, the first take of him screaming is supposed to be how a regular person perceives screaming like just listening and watching, like they can see and listen to it. The second one is supposed to be, that's the one where I think you can't hear it, but you see him. That, the second one is supposed to be how a deaf, per, a deaf person uh, perceives uh, screaming. The third one with the letters that uh, Yao, uh, that is scream is supposed to be a blind person, I think. Because um, the blind person would hear it, but then like they would know that there's like some sort of panic, so they'll like. I feel like they'll. I feel like they'll like, in my head, like I visualize like a yell like that in my head, just like, in words like that. So, and then the last one is supposed to be how a deaf and blind person perceives screaming, where they would just. I feel like they'll feel a, a vibration in their body, and they also feel their heart. The pump, uh, you know. So it will be like just like, and then that's why it has um, it has white, it has like a white background, and then like the small letter, and I think the the words that says like I feel it or something like that. I forgot what it says, but yeah. So why screaming rather than any other emotion? Um, I feel like that one is it was the first one that I thought of that was easier, and also I came up with it while I was listening to a lecture by my history teacher. I think he was talking about something about screaming and then I thought of it and then I uh, improved on it, I guess. Cool. <laughs> um, so last time we talked about your process and your creative projects, um, you mentioned that you wanted to get into painting some more. So, what do you think about the mediums you're used to working with, um, digital, film, and photography? How do you think those will influence um, your future painting projects? Um, maybe um, I could take a still from like a film and paint, like paint it or or even like one of those editorials, I can choose like one of those ideas and it doesn't have to be like a self portrait, but I can use the certain idea and the colors and put it into like a painting or something. So do you find yourself still influenced by the same things that you were when you created the works in Heart for a Brain? Um, I don't think so. I think back then it was more looking at uh, magazines and editorials and whatnot and trying to imitate it. And then with all some, I guess some or like some of my own like originality to it. But now it's just I feel like I'm more um, just think just like putting my own thoughts into it. It might, but my own thoughts are also influenced by other things, but. I think like non it's like non direction like it's not like directly influenced by something, but like yeah, I just take a thought that's probably thought that's like um, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like I feel like it was more directly influenced back then than now. Like there was just like like just like I would look at something and I would try to like imitate it and add something to it. And then now it's just like, um, I just think about it and then I do it instead of looking at something and imitating it. So do you think that your future creative projects, whether they're painting or not, are going to turn out similarly to the works that we've seen in the show? Or? Uh, it could be, um, 
it could be with video, like the projects. I can take something, and then like I would take. I could have the same um, process, but like with video, maybe. Or yeah, <laughs> that was a hard one to answer. Um. Yeah. No worries. I'm not. I don't have an expectation for any of the answers. Um. So. I guess uh, this year has been nuts for obvious reasons. Um, how do you feel that the past year has influenced your creative process as um, someone who works and creates on the side? Um. I feel like uh, there's been way, I feel like I have more ideas than I would have had if I, if everything was normal, I think. Because um, it's, uh, there's a lot of time being inside the house and whatnot. And so there's always like, I, I, I feel like I'm thinking a lot more than I was before. Because back then I had to go to school and um, focus on doing like the assignments and stuff. So now it's just like I'm at home and and I'm like my time on the phone is just like getting like it's uh, increasing increasing and I'm like looking at you know at, like going through like a rabbit hole online and then like I think of something and then like it turns into a movie idea and then like I don't know but at the beginning there was like I feel like there was a lot of ideas like when at the beginning of quarantine happening in my head but then I forgot I kind of forgot a lot of them but I feel like it influences me by just um, by how weird and strange that life is right now. It also makes my work, like the movies, also being be a little bit more strange also. Yeah, I've noticed that in the short films especially, there's some very surreal aspects. Um, do you think that that will be a continuing theme in things that you make in the future? Um, for now, yeah, but it could change in after, like in a few years, but for now, I think it, it yeah. So for you, the past year has been more inspiring than, say, yeah, I hate to say, I hate to say that, but yeah. Well, I think that's, refreshing I think as I mean personally I feel like less inclined to do anything creative let alone productive especially the past few months so it's good to know that um, there are people in the community who are feeling invigorated by um, these absurd circumstances yeah so I guess what is inspiring you lately? Are you working on anything right now? Um, no, but I I recently have thought of like three movie ideas and I'm trying to expand on them. Like the what's to make it about. And I have to I feel like I have to make them a bit longer now, like go a slightly longer than before and make it like more story, like add more story to it and make it a little bit more linear, but also keep the same feel to it. So add more of a narrative. Yeah, like have some narrative, like something like um, more than five minutes. So like see, um, to practice on making something that's longer. So could you talk about a little bit of your background in making art in general? Um, I think that everyone's got a different reason for making the things that they make and um, choosing to um, use art as a creative outlet as opposed to something else, so. Um, I don't think I had a very like artistic background when I was a kid. All I know is that my mom was like to take photos and she did paint, um, but last time I saw any painting by her was when I was like six. So I don't really remember anything after that, but she did, she's always been a person that likes to take photographs. I guess that could be um, one 
like something that inspired me. And then, but uh, but like recently, like uh, after that, then like I somehow I couldn't find anything to do like in, with college or anything, and making art made more sense. Like getting a degree in that than like in business, even though that's like not the right choice financially. Um, so. And also, like, I always, like, um, I always had some, like, natural to, like, some natural, like, incline to, like, having something look good, so, or, like, more, like, my, like, uh, aesthetically, like, pleasing or something, like, and just, like, I feel like visually, I always want to find something that's visually, like, appealing or something, so I feel like that's why, um, or, like, visually, like, strange or, it adds like it makes you feel a certain way. That's why I feel like I got into art. So I don't know. So let's see. We're at just over twenty minutes. Um, does anyone from our little audience have anything they want to? contribute either have a question for Brandon or something to say about the show. That's okay. If not. <laughs> I got some. What's up, Desi? <laughs> How many movies do you watch, Brandon? Um in twenty nineteen I watched like four hundred. Then <laughs> This year, I watched only like 125 because I slowed down by a lot. How do you manage to do that? Are you watching one a day or more? There was days that I did watch one a day, and then there would be days that there's like five. The most I did in a day was five. Um, then, you know, it would be like, it would change. Like sometimes I would just be done with my schoolwork. And then I would just like watch like two movies or something. Like there's always, I feel like there was always a time to fill in and move, like watch a movie. So has film been a consistent interest for you more so than fashion and editorials? Um, I could, I probably, yeah. Cause I think I started really watching a lot of movies in like 2014 and then the, the hard for brain stuff, um, the fashion stuff came around like 2015. So movies, I think they did come a little bit before. I started like, I had like a notebook that I try to write every movie I watched ever. Like I, any, any of the ones that I could think of. And then like, I would like give it a rating or something like that. Like I started doing that in like 2013, 14. Do you have a current favorite director or film house? Or movie, if you could pick one. Um, director um, is this Korean director from uh, South Korea. His name is Park Chan Wook, and he did Old Boy, uh, um, Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, and also uh, The House Maiden, I think, from 2016. I don't know if you've seen any of those. Or I think the mostly his most famous movie is Old Boy. From like 2003. Okay. I haven't seen it. I'm going to add that to my watch list. Um, looking forward to taking a break soon from this quarter. And I'm going to watch some of your recommendations. When is the quarter end? Like in two weeks, right? Yeah, it ends um, next Friday. So not the same thing, oh. but the following. Um, yeah, I'll have plenty of time to watch the movies I haven't seen before. I think one I really want to get to is um, La Dolce Vida, just because I found a really awesome poster for it recently, and I was like, that's one that I never got to, so. That's I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, I think it's from the 50s or the 40s. I don't know. I'll find out. I'll let you know. <laughs> um, no. So I think just to round things out, um, could you explain in your own words um, the title of the show to give um, people who maybe haven't checked it out yet 
an idea of the essence of the show? Um, the Heart for a Brain? Mm -hmm. um, that was uh, um, when I was in in 2016 when I was making all those things I was just um, thinking of um, I was just thinking like regular and then I was like I always thought about how um, how I always did I always like try to follow my heart instead of doing what's actually supposed to be right like in my head like I know that I'm probably I could have done something that would have been more financially like stable, but I didn't want to. Like I know there's always better, like more smarter decisions in life than I ever, that I mean, that I actually took. So, and then I, so I think Heart for a Brain came as like, I have uh, my heart for a brain because I always follow where I want to go instead of like the actual right path. I think that one could argue that um, listening to your heart is a valid path too. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, thanks, Brandon, for joining me for the Q&A. Thanks, Janet and Desi, for joining the Q&A. And um, Brandon, where could folks find you if they wanted to see more of your work? Um, on YouTube, um, I need to change my name on YouTube. So it's more, I think my name on YouTube is, um, Brandon Leon, I'm not sure, for the short movies and all that. And then on Instagram, it's Saliva Liquor. And I think those two for now. Okay. Like, I, don't, like, I don't know how to, on YouTube, it's hard to like actually say a name and then like, it, it's hard to always find somebody on YouTube when you like, you know? Yeah, well, your YouTube videos are embedded oh, in the show. Oh, yeah. So, um, hoping that folks can navigate from there to find your YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, that concludes our first um, virtual view gallery Q&A of the academic year. Thanks again, everyone for joining and looking forward to the future ones. Maybe I'll see some of you again. Thanks. <laughs>